Oh. Let's get on with it. chat <sighs> wow that was quick yawns here already okay hello um, we are finally reached the stage where we're going to power this 1088 XEL board on for the first time so we're going to dive right in with it not gonna any preamble the previous video I had a issue with the audio at the start. I think it might have been. Hi, Michael. Um, it might have been Prodotron who actually pointed that out. It was either it was either you or um, Atari XLE. Uh, anyway, I've chopped the first six minutes off that video. It took YouTube about four or five hours to complete the edit of removing the sit the first six minutes of video but it seems to have synced up now anyway so all the the sticky that i put on the the pin post i put on the video is no longer necessary so um it's it, it looks okay now it sort of just jump straight in without any preamble so Right, so the, bo the the desk is pretty much as I left it yesterday. Uh, with the exception that I've been playing around with the XL, XEL CF uh, board. I've set the power supply up. I joked to Michael that I've basically sealed the the power supply that usually lives on this desk the 9 volt AC power supply I've basically put that into cold storage as far away as humanly possible for the duration of this video because it's got exactly the same connector uh, as this one so I don't want to plug the wrong PSU into the board before I do anything else I've actually got a, another because this adapter needed uh, like a travel adapter to fit in the UK socket but um, I've got a, a 3 amp 5 volt DC adapter which is from a one of those Lantronics device servers and it's got a similar connector on it but it's just a little bit on the loose side anyway Michael just told me that a uh, a good idea for a power a pre power up test if you like is to stick the leds on the board which i've haven't done there's a couple of bits i've m missed off the board yesterday which should have really gone on um uh, which is the power crystal because the bombs oh it's still here good um crystal 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 i'll show you what i'm doing so we've got our crystals here and this is the this is the really rare one i think the pal master crystal and Sebastian, who was in chat last night, he asked me about, uh, was it the, it was the other one, the 4.43 megahertz one for the color burst, the PAL color burst. Um, and I thought I had a stash of those, but I haven't. Of course, Michael sent me all the crystals that I need here, but um, there's one, isn't there? This one. It would be nice to get this one. Well, you can't see what I'm doing. Can you? Hang on. Um, it would be nice to get this 
master crystal in a in the smaller package but uh, you just can't get them so let's get on with it anyway enough rambling I'm gonna pop chat window out move it somewhere I can see it so let's stick these LEDs on anyway and see what happens So the inboard, the green is on off. Uh, I can never remember which way around these dumb things go. And the anode is the the long one, isn't it? I can't remember. Oh, of course, they're keyed on the bloody diode, aren't they? If I can see the flat side, there we go. Got it. There we are. Got the old blue tack. Yeah, square pad is short lead. Correct. I forgot there are actually one side of the LED is flat, which corresponds to the solder mask. thing is with me it's very rare that I, when I'm when I'm building something it's so rare that it's actually built parts actually go where they're meant to go more often than not when I'm building something it's it's going in a pile of hot glue or something okay let's get this on I'll do one leg and then press it down make sure it's flat This blue tack business seems to have caused a bit of interest. Using blue tack to keep the bits on the board. Uh, what what do people normally do to keep bits on the board? Stop them falling off when you're soldering on the back side of the board. Because I didn't know what the convention was, so I just started using blue tack basically. Uh, Hi mobs, you got the notification on time. Good. Yeah. Mopes says I use my finger to hold the component. I'll put solder on the tip of the iron and then on the component. Yeah. That never seems to work out too well for me for some reason. Not that I've tried it much because I've always used the blue tack. But there have been uh, instances where I've tried it um, that ECI connector was a bit of a handful last night I've got a couple of headers that I missed on here so we're gonna put those on and I'll figure out which of the smaller crystals I need on the board <coughs> The far fewer uh, chips to go on here than I thought because four of the ICs in the kit Michael sent were of course for the XELCF board which I may knock together tonight I'll we'll see how it goes if I turn this thing on and nothing happens then it's not much point in building the adapter tonight So I'm sure Michael will be able to debug anything that goes wrong. We'll probably try to. 
So no better time to have a problem than when Michael's in the chat window. There, get you nice and straight. And as soon as I get this done, I'm going to have to start doing some bathroom website stuff I was talking to Michael about. Otherwise, I'm going to get an impatient phone call. Make sure that the jumper labelled OSC is closed. It was a mistake I had and had no system clock. Okay, let's stick some jumpers on before we do anything else. Because I will forget that. So, OSC, just jumper that one. Okay. And the other, obviously, it's NTSC PAL. I think Michael mentioned it earlier on. It's got a common center pin. <coughs> so we're going to go for PAL, of course. So the jump is going to go on there. Does that look correct? Uh, right. So, well, the master crystal we know, X1, is CO16112. Which we're going to stick whoa, up there. I'm going to ask for uh, <clears throat> some sort of strip fluorescent light or something or for Christmas. And the other one is going to be our PAL color burst, which is going to be a frequency of three point, sorry, 4.43, which I think I can read. <clears throat> So it's got to be this one, we'll put you out of the way, 4.43, that's that one. Yeah, I've got a bag of crystals, but most of them are 14 megahertz, which I'm assuming I bought them for VBXE or something, I don't know. No idea. That would probably be the reason. I'm going to keep flicking my eyes up at chat because it's going to be just in case there's an audio problem or a or John, don't do that problem. Right, all right then. I should have got no pesky bits of wire or solder anywhere. How does this handle an external power switch? I've never really bothered to have a look. Um, Oh, well, it makes sense. Okay, then. Let's try a quick power test to see if it catches fire. Here we go. And we have 5 volt USB. What did Michael say should happen? What a decision happen? He just sent me an email, a message. Uh, 
We should get a yellow standby light with power applied and then when momentarily shorting between the switch on pins the switch pins on J3 header then the green light should go on and stay on. So that's answered the question I just asked a second ago about how the switch works. So right, let's get this right. Ground and on. So am I just shorting ground and on, Michael? The two left pins as I look at the board. Oh my complete no that's I'm looking for G3. Uh, try again, try again. G3. <laughs> uh. Ah, right, got you. This long header here. So we've got. Ah, yes, I see you now. So on is the yes. No, look at this chat. Yeah, so it's the rearmost two pins on this uh, one, two, three, four, five, eight pin header. I take it. I'll just wait. Yeah, short pins one to two. Good. Mm, nothing happening. Can't have a bad LED. Can't be lucky enough to have a bad LED. <laughs> Could see what we get on the back, I suppose. Yeah, five five five. Forgot about that. Nice one, Michael. Let's pull this out and put it safely to one side. Yes, because this is the reset. I see, is it not? An audio alert. Well, if I had super chat, we could easily get an audio alert. <laughs> you just have all you'd have to do is send money, and I'd hear a little bell. But uh, a joke. All right. I'll keep looking at the screen. Don't worry. I'm not going to do anything crazy. That's what I'm saying. I'm glad you're here. So I'm going to make the most of the fact that you're here. There we go. Right, let's try again. It's a timer, yeah. But it's commonly used for the reset. Is it? Is it? Is the five 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 used for a reset? Um, on the XE. I thought it was. I don't know. I think I remember something to do with the um, sort of arresting the reset phase for the the old. SIO to ID because the SIO to ID if you mounted it in the computer it took ages to boot up so the computer had to be held in a reset state and also on this one the T key too goes the reset function but I think on the on the stock Atari well maybe I misremember anyway it had something to do with it so let's get it oh we have a steady green light Michael we have a steady green light well that's good that's something good so that maybe it's worth proceeding with the rest the 555 is used as a latching circuit says Michael so would that make sense it's to do with the reset state I'm probably talking box but never mind okay let's pull that out so we might as well go ahead and fit the rest of the ICs in the board on the assumption that this thing may work so TK2, I'm going to put this in first. Uh, 
I always feel a little bit uh, daunted when we have people with a brain in chat. Most people in chat have a brain, of course. Mm. Right, V gate. Put you in. Take this off. <laughs> okay. So we need an extra socket in here to clear the TK2 chip. Okay, so I've got two pokies here. I'm going to put these in. So that's a good sign then, the fact that the the light goes green. What are the dependencies of the green light, Michael? What is the green light telling us? Just that there isn't a basically isn't a short to ground right on the power where the power comes into the board, or or what? Right, fourteen eight eight nine isn't that GTIA? Twenty one six nine eight is Antic. 14806 is CPU. Right, that's obviously the PIA chip, so we'll stick that in. Yeah, 5 volt DC is right, good, good. So there are main power rail works. What's quite Exciting about this one is that I haven't tested this ultimate one megabyte board since I replaced the header, so there's every possibility this doesn't work, but I've got a spare, so we should be okay. Right, CPU notch down. Reasonably good looking chips. Ami 21698 Antic. But this is basically the stash gone, so it's gone to a good home anyway. I pinched the GTI out of a um, 600XL just because it looked quite pretty. Atari Andre, try my ultimate one megabyte. Hi, hi Andre. Yeah, it's here. I'm going to start looking at this as soon as this is done. I've got two broken ones here, actually. I've got Stevens and I've got this one as well. But the good thing is, and this got chopped off the other video, so I'll do it again, is that we've got the TL8. 86 isn't it? Uh, yeah, TL866 programmer that um, Jason Fergus kindly sent me. Uh, and he's the owner of the Rapidus XE that I did a few, a couple of months back. And I've just used this program, has already gone to good use, flashing the um, complete. 1088 XEL ROM to this ultimate board so that it's going to come up with the custom firmware already on the board and I'll finally because I've completely given up on that easy pro thing I'll finally be able to do Simon's EEPROM for his idea which I've kept him waiting for for a long time a long time so apologies to Michael uh, to to Simon for that but uh, I've got everything I need now it's just super convenient so I can use this without having to find a machine that runs Windows 732 bit etc Andre says no rush love the 1088 XEL series okay good I'm glad it's proving useful So we'll put the RAM in. All right now I've got to remember where all these HTC chips go. Well, I'm not going to remember. I'm going to look. 
because I've got a picture. Ah, well, the chips aren't on the board, but they're labelled, so it doesn't matter. Ah, did I hear you've got a TL866 programmer? Says Stephen. Yeah, again, it's like deja vu. Mm. I need a torch. Hang on. Actually, I have to use a torch on here. Hang on, come on. Not camera. Torch. It's supposed to be a gesture to turn this torch on. I can't remember. Is it a single twist? Or a double twist? There, there. Excellent. So this is H HCT00. Which is going to go in here. This is ridiculous. I want to use a torch. I'll put you down there a minute. Don't use a torch. Right, next. HCT138 Where are you? HCT HCT Oh go on I'm gonna have to look this up now It's not one of those Things is it? The what? Well, I put the wrong chip back in the tube. I'm pretty sure I have. Oh no, there it is. Do 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 So I'm rolling these ICs on the desk to just bring the pins in a little bit so that they'll go into these uh, precision sockets. Okay, 74 F08. I know that one, that's where we got our O2 signal from just saw it a minute ago 74F08 yeah I know what it is now yeah yeah well I've, I've heard about it um, come on torch I'm back on not camera There we are. Forty fifty three, I just saw you a second ago. There we go. This one here. I shouldn't leave that on too long, it'll overheat the flash. Clearly telling me it doesn't want to. I should plug this other light in. HCT oh, 08 U714 pin. I see. Yes, you are. So you go to there. HCT 74. Seventy-four down there. So who are you? 
HCT08. And we've got two of this one. And why did I get two HCT08s out of the little tube? Right, so HTC08. HCT, why do I keep saying HTC? It's a phone. Right, off you go. Ouch. Off. Right. Right. Da -da, da -da -da. Cats just run off. I thought you wanted to be on YouTube, Sonny. One seven four. Okay. So why have I got this? I'm worried now because I've got an extra HCT08. Why would I have two of those? It seems so, Michael. It looks like there's two because everything's in. No, no worries, no problem. Right, better to have too many than too few. I kind of want to go slow now because I just, uh, I don't know, you know, the inevitable. Okay, so that's the UAV in. I'm assuming the jumpers are all set up. I'm imagining they are. Now when you put this in, be careful because it can go in one pin off either way. So match it up with the rectangle on the silk screen or just make sure that the extra tall headers are going in centrally on the, on the board. So this would appear to be completely assembled now. I guess I should jump by that stereo jumper as well, I suppose. Or is that a disable jumper? I'm assuming it's an enable. So, oscillators jumpered, pals jumpered. I haven't got this in, so I don't need the. It's not a jumper. Uh, is it a. Oh, it's a diode. It's an LED. Sorry. Yeah. Silly me. Okay. I'll stick this on um, CTS or something just for now so that I don't lose it. Yeah, of course it's for the... I'm assuming it's for the... Yeah, it is. Yes. The diode mark on the silk screen would tend to give that away. Mm -hmm. Right then. So let's... Now what we're going to do here so that you can see what goes on if anything goes on is we're going to use the capture dongle it's not really much point in hooking up the audio because uh, it's a it's a faff on to try and get the audio to come through the, the capture card in OBS it's going to seat this pokey down brand new S video cable because I used all of them to make other cables so I had to buy another one I thought I'd forgotten to buy one actually at the weekend but I had a look I had to look through the eBay history to find out what I actually bought and when I confirmed that I had bought one I then had to find it and it did indeed exist 
um, keyboards downstairs but I'm not going to worry too much about keyboards and stuff right now so let's get you're all just sitting there saying turn it on turn it on so let's turn it on in a second I'm just gonna <laughs> switch to S video um, in fact I want to bring S video into this scene here fingers crossed good luck thanks guys if I uh, if we get through the other side of this thing we'll all have to we'll all have to meet up and have a drink all right good luck skipper so we should get some video output if things have worked out are we getting any video let's check the capture card oh this is agonizing See this ultimate one megabyte might not work. <sighs> okay, let's try again. Let's try the other board. Let's not panic. Could be a dead antic or anything. I don't even know if this CPU works. It should work. I haven't deliberately chosen um, knackered parts by any means, but let's see what else we've got in the box. Let's see what we've got in the box. Look at this little fella here. So we'll swap these over. Just eliminate things one by one. Before we start to look for a short or anything. Alright, so swap this with this. Let's put this out of the way in a minute. Alright. Whoops. Okay. So this is the spare board. I'll just swap these over. Of course, if there's something else wrong, I may have just swapped a working board for a duff one, but, uh, well, let's see. Double check that this is going in the right way. Right. Alright, let's have another go and then we'll start to look further afield for problems. Yeah, I probably should have tested all the chips on real hardware, but they. It should work. Okay, it doesn't appear to be the ultimate board that's at fault here. So, what? Now, this GTI comes out of a 600 XL that doesn't power up. But I had no reason to suppose that it was the GTIA that was the problem, but let's entertain the idea that it might be. I'll do a swap. And that would be good, that would mean that I'd fix this fixed the 600 XL as well. Well I'm pretty sure I swapped every chip on the board beforehand, but no mind. See what happens. I hope there's no reason why the S video signal should be out of range of this capture dongle, but it's something I'm just wondering about. 
Perhaps I'll try it on. Uh, try it on uh, straight into the TV. Perhaps it's okay. So it's not that. It ain't the GTI that's at fault. Entirely possible that Antic is dead because I was very short of those chips. So this one will swap next. The pokies, as far as I know, are both more or less new, so I wouldn't expect a problem there. This is where things usually start for me. What's wrong with it? Yeah, I'm just uh, add excitement. No, I seriously thought all these worked. They all came out of working machines. Uh, the only one I wasn't sure about was the uh, the GTI, the 600XL, because that 600XL has never worked for years. Um, and I'm, it's a machine that I've been trying to fix for quite a while with no success. So yeah, I'm pretty sure they all work. Aside from that one, and we've eliminated it now. So... So the problem appears to be somewhere else. And could it be the capture card? If it's the capture card, we have a bit of a problem because I'll have to interrupt the stream to some extent to actually figure out what's wrong. But it rather looks as if it's just stone dead. So are we disconnected? We are. Let's take this off and have a little poke around underneath. See what's what. This one's pretty stiff, this board. More so than the other one. Let's check I've got everything the right way around. on the torch make sure everything is in the right place Couldn't be the colour pot. Probably a dead short somewhere. I'm going to have to go on the hunt. Everything seems to be in the right place at least. Let's double check on that picture. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. 
Right. Yeah, I quite agree. We'll go for a direct connection to the display. I mean, I don't even know if this S video cable works, to be honest, but it's the only one I've got. It's brand new. So this could get rather interesting if we can't even rely on the on the cable to work. Um, I could enable the audio, of course, and see if I can get some sound out of it. Let's have a look. I'll take this out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, composite, that's a good idea. That would eliminate the cable at least. Uh, let's put ultimate back in, of course. Right. So let's plug this in. you in and I'll take a brief um, you can kind of see the monitor a bit can't you not very well So now you see what I see. Aha, uh -huh. we get a white bar. A white bar. So what would that tell us? I would have said that that's a inability to boot the operating system. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it doesn't appear to be the cable. Although we didn't get a white bar on the capture dongle. Oh. Interesting. I'll pull that out again. I had this exact issue on an LCD, says Stephen. When trying on a CRT, it was a rolling screen. I think from not having the oscillator jumpered. Hmm. It could be something along those lines. I remember the machine I was trying to fix a while ago and it wouldn't work because I'd forgotten to solder the legs of the socket. Right. I'm just curious, I'm just going to, just for the hell of it, I'm going to swap this jumper from NTSC to PAL. For no good reason. Ah, it didn't do anything. No, should it? So I'm going to have to try and track down. I don't suppose the um, 
It couldn't be anything to do with the colour pot because you'd at least get some luminance on the screen. So let's have a little look. Let's have a little peruse of the back of the board. See if I can spot anything obvious. Yep, found the problem. The same problem as last time. You st ah. oh, no. right? Who's going to guess what the problem is? What have I not done on this board? Let me know whether you've been watching previous videos or not. What was the stupidest mistake I've ever made when trying to fix a machine? You'll figure it out in a minute when you start, when you're watching. You'll see in a moment what's wrong. Well, I'm, I'm going to show you what's wrong. No, 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 not Freddy. What did I forget to do? I turned the machine on. That's the one. Look at this. Look at this. Uh, if I get the board in the right place. Look at that. Hmm. Yeah. Of course, I did that on purpose. Just to find out if you were watching previous videos. <laughs> yeah, like, fuck. Yeah. That is actually, seriously, is the kind of thing I probably wouldn't do if I wasn't uh, talking and changing camera views and stuff. I've never done that off camera before, but it's the second time I've done it on camera. So there you go. So hopefully it'll work after this. Andre says, entire socket not soldered. I did that on mine, Michael says. Only in my case it was the 74F08 chip. Yeah, John replaced a Freddy to no avail on a 130XE repair video, and so did I recently. That's why I mentioned Freddy. Yeah, but there's no Freddy on this board. That's the other thing that's uh, different about it. So Michael will probably tell us why. I've never really given it a second thought. It's probably very, very simple. Because Freddy just replaced a few discrete chips, didn't it? So is that also the case with uh, this board? That the, it's using the discrete chips? Or is it handled in, in some other fashion? The logic of the job done by Freddy. Yeah, I know, that was part of the failed joke. I think it's because this board uses SRAM, so... Ah, so stuff like refresh and things like that, just not needed. Not that I'm aware. Did Freddy also handle DRAM refresh? Or was that... Oh, well, that's antic, isn't it, really? Oh, well. I'll just let Michael answer these questions. He knows what he's talking about. Okay. And a lot is not needed because of Ultimate One Megabyte. Yeah. Mm hmm. Okay, let's try again. So we've still got our window open. Let's short those on. Because I might, I might now have the bad Ultimate in if one of them is bad. There's no reason why they should be, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. There we are. It works. And it would have worked first time if I hadn't forgotten the sole of those pins. Exactly the same as the previous video. So, yes, good. It works. Excellent. Oh, dear me. That wasted a lot of time. 
So we know it works because we've got the menu up. Damn, I'm never going to live that down. <sighs> it's not because I made an error, it's just because, you know, it would have just been immediate. Works. First time. Perfect. But no. <sighs> Damn it. Alright then. So, really, I should go down and get the keyboard. I'm going to go and get that keyboard and see if it works, so I shall not be long. I'll turn the iron off as well. Alright, here we are. This is a, a Lab Tech keyboard. It's a PS2 keyboard. Hmm, do I see smoke there, John? Ah, <sighs> you bastard. I kind of saw it there. I actually visualised smoke, but it was a it was a glint of light on the top of the SIO connector. Oh God! Don't do that to me, Jesus! Well, aside from that uh, error, I'm, I'm quite pleasantly surprised that it works because from a sort of a build from scratch like that. I'm quite pleased about that because when I was doing the Uno carts, a good half of those bastards didn't work first time. So this is good. So I'm just going to make myself a little bit of room here and see if we can. Um, yeah, call a medic. Jesus. Um, what was I going to say there a minute ago? There's a couple of things I was going to ask. Um, yeah, Michael, why does a USB to PS2 converter not work on the keyboard? I was curious to know why. And the other thing is, how can you turn it back off again? Is that kind of a momentary switch on the header to turn the power on and off? Uh, or is it like a PC where it has to be shorted for a while or so two questions for the moment I'll just pull the plug because um, we've got a mouse as well which Michael kindly supplied but I'm not gonna get into testing the mouse I think this is gonna be a I think we'll have to do yet another follow-up video on here where we just sort of play around with the system and test things with a mouse and that kind of thing. Only the older USB keyboards had a dual protocol supported support in the firmware. That's what I was thinking as Stephen says I believe not all USB keyboards properly implement the PS2 protocol so yeah I just sort of when I was wondering why they didn't work I just assumed maybe they'd it was a sloppy implementation or something, but I have no idea uh, of the of the inner details of it. So let's power up again. Now I haven't got. Oh, we get flashing keyboard lights and all this good stuff. All this good stuff, yes. Right, where the hell? Because the spike in blood pressure when. Andre said there was smoke coming out of the board. I've completely forgotten everything. Uh, I should have a TK2 cheat sheet. Well, we're in the BIOS anyway. What is the help key again, Michael? Can you remember? 
I can hardly see this because it's so small. I'm going to move this around a bit. I can barely see what I'm doing here. I'll tell you what, I'll move. We don't need the bomb anymore, so I'll move chat on the right half of the screen. And I'll move open broadcaster onto the left half of the screen so I can sort, I can sort of see what I'm doing now. F10's help. Excellent. Okay. And F... Oh, F12, it's... Ah, oh, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. It's all coming back to me now. So here we are moving around in the BIOS. So tab to get the year. And... Excellent. Shift tab takes you back over as well. Uh, what month is it? Jesus, what month is it? I'm, I'm lost. Uh, it's November, yeah. And it is the 6th of November. Okay. And it is 21. 21.04. Control, return. And that will do. Right, so our, our integral device is working. We've got stereo pokey, which is currently disabled. So we'll turn that on. Second Pokey IRQ is disabled, we'll leave that off. GTI V Kate will leave that off. So it's um Andre says I love the ten eighty eight XEL, thanks for all your work on it, Michael. Yeah, I echo that, absolutely echo it. it. As I said, I think I mentioned last night, it's just been completely on the periphery of things. And I, I mean, I still am. I wasn't part of the of the beta testing team as such at all. But um, it's absolutely infectious stuff, being involved with this thing. Really fantastic. And he has done a fantastic job. Uh, yeah, so here we go. So this, oh, the, ah, no, oh, ah, right. This was unexpected. I just flashed a version I was testing. We need to get some more space on this desk. I think I'll move the XEL CF, bit, CF bits and put them in a little box because I don't think we're going to get that into that tonight. Get myself a little box. But yes, unexpectedly, the graphical OS um, work in progress um, cough is actually on the ROM, so we'll be able to test the mouse. Let's clear a little bit of space here. Have a bit of a tidy up. Oh yeah, Michael's reminding me about the mouse jumper. Good point. Right. I'll turn this off as well. That's better. up here I'll get the solder out of the way for the moment get this PLCC removal tool out of the way dump these in the drawer get all the bits of metal off the table because they aren't going to do us any good at all
Okay. Right. Yeah. Right, is the joystick control disabled? I still haven't got enough room here. Just don't use don't need this USB cable anymore. Thanks to Jason. Get rid of this. Get rid of this, this and this. That's a bit better. Right. Move this. Right. Okay, so what have I got a jumper again? Let's have a look. Let's have a little look. So can I turn this off with by shorten pins, Michael? surprised this keyboard works there's a guy I know up the street who uh, oh cool oh fantastic right so where's this jumper again you see a tiny switch shown in the sill screen Oh, mouse port select. Mouse port select. So is that our middle three pins with a common center pin? Is that what you're telling me? Yeah, UK two SP. PS2 keyboard. Yeah, there's a fellow, you just, I do, he's call me up to fix his PC or whatever, or get his internet working again. And uh, as a consequence, every time he gets rid of his junk, um, I'm being paranoid, I'm just gonna. So if I wanna use port two for the mouse, I want to jump at the pins three and four. Does that sound about right? Get the mouse plugged in. See what we can do. Uh, where did I put the mouse? Yeah, so he gave me about three keyboards, and fortunately, I didn't throw them all out. If you short from that to the next pin towards you, that will be port two. Exactly right. Good. Thank you. So we'll have a bit of mouse action before we wrap up. That's a bit. Be well worth. Um, not not necessarily tomorrow, but just. Uh, oh, and it's optical as well. Wow. Not expected. Optical mouse. I thought it was going to be a ball. Yeah, I want to spend an hour or so just doing a full tour of everything when I've got the XELCF set up and I want to try this dual drive stuff on real hardware. Right, good. <coughs> it's a 400 DPI mouse, excellent. There's a euro sign on this keyboard. God damn you. I've got a black marker somewhere. Um, right. So, power on. I'm going to have to get some switch set up here. Good. Let's check the mouse is disabled. I think it should be. It is good I'm not really getting a good 
impression no, I've got the wrong mouse now. I'm trying to work the PC with Michael's mouse. Uh, I've never used the GUI with a decent mouse before, so I can copy the chat actually before I shut the window. I'll do that if you want, Andrew. I'll save the chat, but YouTube chat is it's it is completely hopeless. It's time they had some sort of method of uh, archiving it. I just want to have a look full screen to see what the, the we're not going to get a full indication of the quality of the video, but using the capture card, but it does look very nice even at this size. The mouse code is still beta, but eventually I plan to add mouse scaling to it. Yeah. Well, the, the GOS has already got acceleration built in, which works quite well. Um, it is a very nice picture. Yes, it is. Okay, so let's see now what we can do here. This is the unreleased BIOS for those who aren't part of the private message discussion about the firmware. This is basically in release state. So we can select to boot to graphical operating system. And we should be able to press C to cold start and we should get straight into it. Let's see if we do. And we do. Wow. That is incredibly responsive. Unbelievable. Because the mice that I use. Um, have I got a mouse that I use normally on this thing? Here's one. They are nice and they are much better than ST mice. This is one. I mean, it's gone yellow. This one here, really nice little mouse, but the it's much much slower. Obviously, the DPI is a lot lower than our oh, high Prototron. Again, so we have a little two mice. Jeez, it's getting complicated. This let's have a little play with this. It's so quick. That I'm, it's so it's sufficiently quick that I, that I, as a matter of urgency, this this needs a control panel to slow the mouse down. It's with the acceleration on. If the software acceleration wasn't on in the kernel, it's in the mouse driver itself. It would be about right, but this it just, just I think it's a sustained movement for so many frames. And it starts to accelerate and it's very very quick it's too quick but that's that's not the fault of the uh, the TK2 that's because we can't configure the acceleration but obviously some people are going to use it with the with legacy equipment so it needs to suit all uh, all kinds because the um, Without the acceleration, it was a miserable experience with an actual Atari and a, an ST mouse. Thoroughly miserable. But this appears to work pretty good. Very nice. Very nice. Much more pleasant to use, I have to say, than um, with the old fashioned mice. Much better. I'm actually going to enjoy using this thing. This might just be the inspiration I needed to get back into this project. There you go. This is just what I needed. Because it's it's actually going to be quite pleasant to use. With a PC keyboard and a, a decent mouse. It's actually going to be pleasant to use. So there we go. Impressive. Impressive.
Stephen says, people that saw it, your GUI said it was faster than the original Mac. It certainly gets a kick from this mouse. It seems a lot faster on this hardware than it does on when you're using an ordinary mouse, although it isn't really. But you would think it was. It's odd. Um, but in fairness, it didn't take them about six or seven years to write the original Mac operating system. They did rather rather a good job of it, I have to say. That's what I was hoping for, says Michael. Inspiration to finish Goss. Great to see this live again. A lot of people got to demo it at VCF, says Michael. That's excellent. The, the nice thing about it is that it's, it does show off the mouse um, very nicely. It's good. It's a lot of fun. There are going to be a lot of people with a usable mouse once these boards get out into the wild. So you have a master plan, Michael. Is that what you're telling me? You've got a master plan. This is all a, a cohesive, concerted plan to synchronize the graphical OS with this board. It's, it's all starting to make sense now. Yeah. Excellent. So if I press F12 now, I should just go straight back into the BIOS. Fantastic. So, if I press L, we should get the loader. Yep, and it's waiting for a non-existent device. Prodotron says, yes, please finish A Goss now. Yeah. Um, and then back to the... That was weird. What happened there? I'm going to try that again. So... And press L for the loader. So F12 simulates help and reset. It's just I got some. Why? Why did it go to the. I guess this is just uh, standard timing out stuff. Yeah, nothing to worry about, so I'm going to press F12 straight back there. Yeah, that's fine. I had to run when I was, I think it was last year's update, I had to, I spent a bit of time running the loader without any cartridge connected and stuff to try and, because it's a complicated program, and to try and make it survive um, unexpected situations. Um, but the timeout is very long, I noticed, uh, even though I reduced the timeout on the IDE driver when there's no card connected in the emulator, at least when I, which is the only way I've been able to test it, uh, the timeout, it boots still very long, and I'm assuming because it's just repeatedly polling for various operations. Um, you could probably make a timeout in the compact flash card even shorter. But if you're happy with how it works, that's the main thing. That's why I've left it sort of brewing up for so long, because um, I want some feedback on it, and I really do. Uh, F11 will take you to the loader. Ah, yes, so this is from the... Um, so F11 takes you to the loader even from inside of the operating system, is that what you're saying? Because it... Does it do the whole, it first takes you to set up, well, that's pretty good. Now the funny thing, funny you should mention that about uh, a single step, a single key taking you to the loader because um, way back about two years ago when I was writing this thing initially, uh, Pro Wizard and I were talking about something along those lines but eventually I ditched it because it seemed, we mutually agreed that it was so potentially destructive because you can get into setup non-destructively and come back to where you were before providing you've got reset protection in your in your program but if you start the loader from the setup screen 
obviously it's going to reboot the whole OS, but the fact that you've implemented it outside of the um, the firmware is, is fine. I mean, it's uh, it's a nice extra. I just didn't do it in the in the firmware. John, just for fun, can you pop in any game card? Let's see if I can find one. I've got. Hang on a minute. Um, of course, this should, if you flash the standard firmware to it, the standard loader, it should work with the side cartridge as well. Of course. Um, what about what about Uno card? Uno card would that do the job? Because there's a few things on here. Let's give it a try. I'm gonna pull the power off again. So we'll try Uno cart. I can't remember what I have to disable in the BIOS and things to get this to boot, but we'll see. Uh, let me turn everything off. Why on earth is that grey? Um, hang on, have we never ever got as far as the blue screen on this test yet? So is it possible that the that we have a problem with colour? Could it be? Because this should be green actually, it was a test version of the... It was a test version of the menu. I don't think we've got any colour. We've got some colour. Oh, there we are. Wow, that, I didn't think I'd have to adjust it that far, Michael. But it works fine. That's good. Phew! So I'll probably calibrate that later on, but it's... um that's. Believe it or not, that's the colour it's supposed to be. Okay. Alright, what will we run? I don't know anything about games. I'm supposed to interview... Well, I won't give it away. I'm supposed to interview somebody who's a, a superb game programmer for a magazine shortly. And I feel so unprepared because I can ask him a lot of technical questions but when it comes to playability I'm gonna to have to read some reviews of his stuff before I start because I'm, otherwise I'm just going to be talking out my ass completely um, drop zone okay let's try drop zone this keyboard by the way this one that I it's absolute shit it's horrible it blocks all the time I'm gonna to have to get a decent one I mean, it's got somebody's burned it here. It's the cursor keys are blocking all the time. It's really, really awful. So I think we need a decent keyboard. Well, I'm not far off with the color calibration anyway. So they, I take it this um, stray color in the border area is on observable on real. A, a standard Atari so vGate this was an, is one application where vGate would clear up that I'm assuming I don't know if I've ever run drop zone on this capture card before but I never noticed that before Andre says I was so blessed to meet Archer McLean if you enable vScan you'll get well let's give it a try let's give it a try so we go into the BIOS we go into vGate because the BIOS has no way of um, or no need to probe this hardware because it's guaranteed to be present. So the single B save and reset will go back in and have a look. Yeah, so Andre says he met Archer McLean. What did um did Archer McLean have something to do with Drop Zone? Did he? That's not far off. 
correct. That actually was more or less right for Pal. Uh, right, what happened there? Why have I gone to basic? Ah, because I've got to press the reset button, haven't I? You fool. And it came up as well. He wrote... Oh, he wrote Drop Zone, did he? As well as International Karate. That was another good looking game as well. So let's go back into Drop Zone and see if we've got rid of this crap around the outside of the screen. And we have... Marvellous. So, all looks good, does it? I can't remember. But it looks it looks about right to me. Yeah, I had to press the reset button on the Uno cart as well to get the get the ROM back. You see, because it's uh, when you start the game up, it disables the ROM on the cartridge. I want to try that uh, E-Type Jaguar as well because. Um, it uses some power blending, I seem to remember. So we'll try that. Oh, I should have hit start to actually start the game. Sorry. <laughs> oh, another. So the. So F5's reset in Altera and start on here. Oh, God. Two, two sets of translated console keys to remember. Oh, God. Oh, uh, I just got rid. Of, I've just got used to Altera. Um, it's a shame we couldn't come up with some sort of universal standard. Actually, um, that looks nice as well. Really nice. Yeah, well, we'll get used to it eventually, I suppose. <laughs> so are the F keys on a 1200XL mapped directly to the F keys on the PC keyboard, Michael? I suppose that would be one advantage of doing things this way. Andre says, good, well, that looks ready for shipment to Holland, John. So yeah, I'll just get down the post office with this tomorrow, Andre. No problem. Uh, where was I going with this? Oh yeah, I was going to get past the the loading screen. There we are. And there's an in-game view. Okay, so I think yeah, I'll, yeah, do it is. Uh, it's fun when it works. When you remember to solder in all the pins on the so on the sockets, of course, it really helps a lot. Okay, so let's power off and take this out. And I think it's time that I I think I'll run an ice bath. There's been uh, too much excitement. My hair's got this awful kind of kink in it. I don't know what the hell's going on with it. So, right. So, everything looks good. Okay. So uh, that turned out pretty good at the end of the day. So I hope you enjoyed watching this. Um, I'm just going to pull the pull the mouse and the keyboard out so that I don't drag the board off the table. Yeah, let's let's not look at me. Let's look at the. Let's get rid of this as well. Yeah. So now we'll have another look at the board. Why not? This camera, the desk is just far enough away from the camera to make it all look completely rotten. But when you 
get to this distance it doesn't look too bad okay then so we'll save up some uh, we'll have a look at the XEL I'm gonna put that XEL CF board together and then we'll have a fiddle on with the hard disk and stuff but I think this is given a pretty good general picture of uh, how the thing works the video looks really good uh, obviously I haven't checked the sound out yet we'll have to do that as well um, I'll set the capture card to pick the sound up and we'll have a bit of, a bit of a play with the board at some point in the next video or a forthcoming video but for the moment uh, I'd like to thank Michael again for a really great fun project uh, and thank him for sending me this kit um, you know which was uh, had a lot of stuff in it and I really appreciate it and I hope the uh, videos are some use and uh, I really appreciate everybody who came in the chat to watch it's been really good it's been a lot of fun it's been a lot more fun than just sitting and putting the putting the board together uh, alone so i will with that call it a day as usual if you like the video give it a thumbs and uh i've started to put these end plate things on the on the videos so you get a link to the website and whatnot and one thing and the other so i will call it a day and thank you john for doing these videos and for the customized ultimate one megabyte bias well it's been my pleasure michael absolute pleasure it's been a lot of fun working with you on this uh on at least on the bits of the project where i had some input or that i was some use so i will call it a night for tonight and i hope you enjoyed the video thanks for turning up thanks for watching and i will see you in the next video